Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha! I'm Tina Gaspar. I'm Chase Prongal. I'm Kyle Fleming. And I am Travis De La Cruz, and we're here in Waimea on the west side of Kauai on the campus of our school, Waimea High. Home base for today's episode of Hikino, the nation's first statewide student news network. Hikino means can do, and you'll see just what students from our team of schools can do. This episode's team is made up of intermediate and high schools from four islands. From Maui, there's Kamehameha Schools Maui and Kihei Charter School. On Oahu, we have Nanakuli High and Intermediate, James Campbell High, Waipahu Intermediate, Le Jardin Academy, and Mid-Pacific Institute. From the Big Island, there's Hawaii Academy of Arts and Science. And from Kauai, of course, Waimea High School, home of the mighty Menehune. On this show, you'll hear from diverse voices across the island chain, telling stories that connect communities, on Hikino, can do. Before we introduce our first story, we'd like to recognize the grant organizations that made Hikino a reality. They believed Hoi could create the nation's first statewide student news network. They put their faith in us and said, can do. To them, we say mahalo. Now, on with the show. Captain James Cook anchored his ship at this very location in 1778 with the dreams of building a relationship between the Polynesian culture and the Western culture. Today, the Waimea High School paddling team uses this inlet to practice for paddling competitions. Creating graffiti on public or private property without consent is against the law. However, a legal form of graffiti in which the artist is given permission by the property owner has been gaining momentum. That art form was celebrated in a recent event at the Honolulu Academy of Arts. Mid-Pacific Institute has a story about using a controversial medium to inspire and build communities. Anybody under the age of 27 does not know what a city looks like without graffiti. You gotta understand this state of mind, like blank walls, like they don't get it. Anybody younger than that thinks like walls with art on it is cool. Graffiti has been around for centuries. In recent years, it has acquired a bad reputation. But as with all things, it has evolved. Basically, you know, there's a creation side and there's a destruction side. And we're emphasizing the creation side. Graffiti is just one of the many labels for this art form. Artists have their own reasons for using a particular name, be it aerosol art, graffiti art, or street art. There's a reason why I chose to call it graffiti. It was a conscious decision to call it graffiti because of the misconception of the work. Old school writers in New York, they call this writing. We're writers, we write. Uh, we don't call it graffiti. I don't really think this is street art. I think street art is more like a genre. Nowadays, I'm starting to just call it art in public. It's a very exciting time. Laws are being passed now. Uh, community groups are forming for and against it. Museums are sponsoring it. And so it's, it's shifting the paradigm. Perhaps with the hip hop movement, public opinion is shifting from questioning whether this is art to asking, what do you have to say? I think the general public views this as, as a cool art form. In the beginning, when we first started, it, it was hard for them to understand that graffiti is about, is about expression, and it's about having something to say. We have the voice for the community. We can speak on issues that are important to all of us. Graffiti in Hawaii has gained its own identity adopting ideas and styles from Hawaiian culture. It has changed from a simple piece of art into a new cultural experience. I remember growing up in the 80s, we had our own style. 
And now that I'm back, everything is all about Hawaii. It's all about repping Hawaii's culture. And I'm really adamant about that. The mural that we did in Kalihi, the water rights one, with uh, Queen Lilio Kalani as the centerpiece, I can't tell you how many Hawaiians came up and cried when they looked at that mural. That's what you want. You want the connection, you know? They value it. Now it's a, like a public treasure. It's not our mural anymore. It's our mural. It's a powerful thing. Graffiti is taking on legitimacy as a form of urban art, but only when it's done with permission. For Hiki No, I'm Alexis Green from the Pacific Institute. If you'd like to stay connected with what's happening on Hiki no, log on to our Facebook page. It's filled with photos and current info regarding the show. You can also follow us on Twitter at Hiki no Can Do. It's a great way to get reminders of upcoming episodes. We now take you to Hawaii Academy of Arts and Science on the island of Hawaii for our student voices feature. Let's hear how some of the students there respond to the question, what inspires you? What inspires me is music because it expresses my feelings. People who question authority. Lightman Universe. The thing that inspires me is surfing. The thing that inspires me the most in my life is poetry. Is knowing other people. Making people laugh. Say would be my books. My dream job to become a big guy that makes some share games. Politics and belly dancing. I'm inspired by drive and participation and just attempting to do your best no matter what the odds are. Do you need someone to talk to? Waimea High School provides two grade counselors, a career counselor, a Hina Malka program, and a Mokihana counseling service. Each student also has a teacher designated as their significant adult. Up next, a story from James Campbell High School about a girl who found the support she needed to become an excellent student and an excellent mother. Amidst the books, and the bells, and the homecoming festivities, one student at James Campbell High School in Eva Beach has a much bigger role to fill than club leader or even student body president. For May Tamayo, finding out she was pregnant near the end of her sophomore year was a scary experience. Did he have a child that has red hair? And like a lot of teenagers that face the prospect of becoming a teen mother, she wasn't quite ready to admit it. At first I kind of denied that I was pregnant because I just didn't want to be pregnant. And then like four months passed and then I was like getting big. According to health professionals, that's not an uncommon reaction because not unexpectedly. I was kind of scared. And her greatest fear? About, like, how they would judge me and stuff. Because I used to be just this innocent girl to them. For too many girls, teen motherhood can be an isolating experience. Because as May found out, having a baby didn't just test her. It also tested her friendships at school. The social stigma attached to teen pregnancy can be enough to kill the enjoyment many students get in their high school experience. And of roughly 1 million students that become pregnant each year, only 20% will graduate. May's friends weren't just ready to accept her. They were ready to do whatever it took to protect and support her. She's like family to me. So like, first thought in my mind was like, we have to be there for her because a lot of people like to judge and stuff. Even one of May's teachers became something of a trusted confidant. I knew that I had a duty as a teacher and as a mentor to, to help her and make her feel better and make her feel wanted and secure in school and in life. May is 100% mother. From bathing to changing to snuggling on the couch. But it's no doubt that raising baby Angelina is a family affair. Or that the supportive friends and community have helped this teenager be a great mother while still getting an education and pursuing her dreams. The Waimea Theater originally opened on September 2nd, 1938. However, as was the fate of many small movie houses, it closed in 1972. Luckily, the West Kauai Business and Professional Association reopened the theater to the public in August of 1999. The renovated theater now accommodates 270 patrons. It features a small stage, 
big movie screen, state-of-the-art sound system, Rattan seating section, and a snack bar. Unfortunately, it still is not capable of playing 3D movies. But let's check out Kihei Charter School and see how 3D technology has shaped their reality. This is a 3D printer. Some 3D printers cost thousands of dollars. Fortunately, you can buy a kit and assemble the 3D printer yourself. These kits are affordable for schools and for people who want to manufacture small items out of their home. To make a new part, you create a model of it in a computer-aided design program, a CAD program. Computer-aided design is being taught in many high schools today, and students can print out some of their creations on a 3D printer. Plastic filament gets fed into the nozzle and heated up by the extruder, and the part is created as the platform moves around. At our school, we hope to produce small items to sell for fundraising. For Kihei Charter, this is James Kihani. The culinary program at Waimea High School has increased 25% in the last three years, even though the overall school population is decreasing. The students enjoy learning how to cook, but they really love to eat. Speaking of eating, our next story from Nanakuli High and Intermediate tells us how hunger can be set aside from a truck. A silver truck which has become a staple of the Nanakuli community and is not leaving anytime soon. This silver truck is known as the Manapua Man. Let's take a look. Nanakuli Avenue has been home and custom to a feature that satisfied the community's stomachs and their wallets with the cheap, convenient food from the silver trucks known as the Manapua Man. What makes the Manapua Man so popular in the community? I'm always hungry after school, so yeah, and because it's like cheap food. It gives us kids a chance to actually eat the food we want to eat. It's always more closer. It's cheaper than a regular store. It has a good variety of food and it tastes very good to me and I enjoy it. As popular as the Manapua Man is, some question the nutritious value of their food. It's not nutritious food. Everybody knows that. Everybody. But they're out there to make a dollar, just like certain restaurants and people that don't sell nutritious food either. Because they're out there to make money. And as long as people want to buy it, they're going to make it. This Manapua man preferred not to be seen on camera for personal reasons. Well, I've been here for 20 years. More than 20 years, and it's the quality of food, not day-old food, it's always got to be fresh. He sells musubis, cookies, candy, lumpia, pork ash, rice cake, soda, Sprite, Mountain Dew, Pepsi, Manapua, 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 and so on. They're serving fat on top of fat and then they're garnishing it with fat. Typically everything that would that I sell, yeah, they pretty much goes, everything goes out every day. Yeah, that's how he makes his money. That's, that is his money. He can't sell anything else. But what if the Manapua man offered healthy choices? If the Manapua man only sold fruits and stuff, I would be actually happy because I love fruits. I would never go to him for food. Because who go there's a reason why we go to the Manapua mat is because we want fattening foods that are yummy. We don't want no fruits and vegetables. For the fruits and salads and stuff, it would be good because I like fruits and salads. I think that's pretty hard to do to change any menu to salads and fruits because we're not used to that. We like our meat. We like our fat. We like certain things, but I think making small changes in the beginning is really a good idea. And I also think that they, he should start selling fruits. Nanakuli Avenue will always be home to these silver trucks. Perhaps in the future, he would add salads and fruits and make a more nutritious impact on the community. Reporting for Hiki No at Nanakuli High and Intermediate School, I'm Samuel Hedin. And now, here's something special from one of our Hikino schools. The Kauai Nui Marsh is located on the windward side of Oahu in Kailua and right across the street from Le Jardin Academy. Every day, hundreds of cars pass by the marsh to go to school or to work. 
Many don't know what makes the area behind those trees so important to Kailua. Without the marsh, Kailua's drainage system would be thrown off and we'd be flooded all the time, right? The marsh is important to the overall health of Kailua. Um, it's important to Native Hawaiians. It was the biggest fish pond on Oahu at one time. You know, there's a lot of co rich cultural history there. As we grow as a community, we want to keep the places that are wild and free, the open places such as Kauai Nui Marsh, because they are important to who we are as individuals, and they are important to the planet too. Wetlands are important to the biodiversity in Hawaii. They help with the health of our ocean ecosystem and the reef. All of it works together and helps our community be a better place to live. I'm Morgan Alexich at Leisure Dan Academy, leaving you with a student's perspective of the marsh and what it means to her. It is really refreshing to know, to know that our school is right by the marsh in Kailua and that we can go there any time of day. And it will still be beautiful no matter if it's rainy, windy, or cloudy. It is still a great place to live and learn. If you'd like to stay connected with what's happening on Hikino, log on to our Facebook page. It's filled with photos and current info regarding the show. You can also follow us on Twitter at Hikino Can Do. It's a great way to get reminders of upcoming episodes. The west side of Kauai was devastated when Hurricane Niki struck in 1992. The Waimea High School gym roof blew off, windows were blown out of classrooms, and there was no electricity for three weeks. Families lived at the school because their houses were in worse conditions. Luckily, Waipahu Intermediate wants to prepare us for future disasters. How often do you think about a disaster? Maybe the last thing on your mind living in a beautiful place called Hawaii. Hurricanes, flash floods, power outages and earthquakes are just some of the many disasters that could occur at any given time or day. Regardless of what may strike, you should always be prepared. Having a disaster preparedness kit can stand by, can save your life. Like they say, it's always better to be safe than sorry. Disaster preparedness kits consist of the practical needs for everyone in your family. Some things that you should consider in the disaster preparedness kits are non-refrigerated items such as canned foods, peanut butter, low salt, crackers, cookies and cereals. Store one gallon of water per person a day, flashlights, batteries, battery operated radio, medication, a can opener and cash. Canned food should be non-perishable and should be renewed every six months. It is always unknown how long it will take to receive an all clear signal after a disaster has occurred, so make sure you pack enough necessities to last you and your family for at least three days. Pack and prepare before a disaster strikes. For more information on how to prepare your disaster preparedness kit, go to scd.hawaii.gov. And now, back to Hawaii Academy of Arts and Science for more student voices describing what inspires them. I'm inspired by surfing. I am inspired by happiness. <laughs> what inspires me is volleyball. I'm inspired by the Hawaiian culture. I'm inspired by the ocean. I'm inspired by the ocean, music, and the pursuit of happiness. Soccer inspires me. I'm inspired by my grandpa. I'm inspired by music. Animals inspire me. Um, what inspires me is art. The will to live. Hula and my Hawaiian background. What inspires me most is music and how involved my family is. What inspires me is my friends, families, and all my coaches that were there for me when I needed it. I'm inspired by the diversity in our community, cosmetology, art, and difference. What inspires me is comedy. I am standing on the Waimea Pier, or Waimea Landing as it is called. The original wharf was built in 1865 as a port of call for whaling ships. Products exported from West Kauai at the time were raw sugar, cattle, taro, and goats. However, now it is used more for fishing or just a stroll with that special someone. Check out this special story by Nakoa Media of Kamehameha Schools, Maui, as a haiku couple take their love for animals to a whole new level. It is a love story you definitely don't want to miss. Hidden away on a two-acre parcel in Haiku, Maui, lays the home of Sylvan Schwab and his guests. But they are not your typical guests. They are all orphans or injured animals. East Maui Animal Refuge, this is Sylvan. Can I help you? 
The East Maui Animal Refuge, more affectionately known as the Boo Boo Zoo, is home to over 50 cats, 50 birds, 25 deer, 16 goats, two horses, two pigs, one cow, and an endless amount of fowl. I can't think of any animal that is on the island that we have not had here at one time or another because we take in anything if it's in a life-threatening situation. Each animal comes to the refuge with a story, some more interesting than others, such as the case of Baby, the blind cow. She was born blind, which is why we took her in. She was already named Baby when she came. Um, but um, along with pretty much all of the animals that we have here, they come because they're in some kind of life-threatening situation. Um, this is Gabriel. Gabriel is our oldest goat. And as you can see, he's really scrawny um, because if he was a person, he'd be about 95 years old. And uh, Gabriel came because he was attacked as a little goat by dogs and his neck was torn open and his ear was split. Uh, so Gabriel's been here since he was a little guy. So what motivates a person to turn their home into an animal sanctuary? Well, it turns out that the animals aren't the only ones with a special story. We started out just doing this because when I met my wife, Susie, um, I found out shortly after I met her that she had cancer and that it was not treatable uh, through allopathic medicine on, on the mainland. So she basically came to Maui to die. And part of her treatment was occupational therapy to have a drive to survive. So when I found out she had cancer, I started collecting sick little critters for her. And that's how the Boo Boo Zoo started. And over 30 years now, it's evolved into this. And Susie has been clear of cancer for almost 30 years now. And now we've saved the life of the animals who in fact helped save her life. Even with Susie being cancer free, the Schwabs continue to share their home and give their love unconditionally to injured and unwanted animals. Recently, Sylvan was denied a renewal of his wildlife rehabilitation permit. Sylvan and the Department of Land and Natural Resources are currently working together to resolve these problems, so the Boo Boo Zoo can and will continue its mission. But we still have this need to care for animals, and we established the Boo Boo Zoo as a no-kill facility. We're going to work it out. One way or another, we have to work it out because we have to do what we do. We have to take care of animals in distress. Sylvan credits the animals for saving Susie's life. But one could say the credit goes both ways. No matter how you look at it, the Boo Boo Zoo is truly a home built with love. From the East Maui Animal Refuge in Haiku Maui, I'm Nikki Davis reporting for Hiki No. Well, that's it for this week's show. We hope you've enjoyed the stories that were shared from around our islands. So join us next week to see what the students of Hawaii can do only on Hikino and only on PBS Hawaii. We leave you now with a short montage of the sights and sounds of our campus in Waimea. Aloha! Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.